What is up you guys? So today's going to be a tutorial on how to do five warping transitions in Premiere Pro. So let's get started with the tutorial. Okay, so the first transition I'm going to use is the twirl effect. So let's go to effects and search up twirl and then we're going to add it onto our first clip. Okay, now let's go down to the settings. And as you can see, if I drag that angle to the right, it sort of twirls in a circle. And also, if I keep it at like 60 and I move the radius, it rotates it a bit. So I'm just going to reset these settings right now. And then I'm going to go to the end of the clip where I want the transition to start. And I'm going to press the two keyframe buttons for angle and twirl radius. And then at the very end of the clip, I'm going to adjust the angle to be uh, about as much as I want it to twirl. So it'll be like 103.99. And then the twirl radius will be 44. But because you can see some of the black edges, I'm just going to scale this. So I'm going to stay at the end of the clip and just drag that scale up. And then press the keyframe button and then go to where our transition starts. And then reset the parameter so it starts at 100. Okay, so now you can see that it sort of twirls. And we're going to need to do the same thing for our second clip because it kind of looks odd just having the first clip looking like that. So what you can actually do is you can save this as a preset. So you can actually add this to any of your video clips very easily without redoing the same settings over and over again. So if I select the twirl and then hold command on my keyboard, and select the motion as well and then I right click there's a set of options and I'm going to press save preset and then you could just name the preset I'll just name it twirl transition and then press ok okay so now if we go to effects and we can search up twirl transition like we named it and it'll be under our presets and I'm just going to add it to my second clip okay but as you can see the transition happens at the end of the clip so we're just going to drag those scale keyframes and flip it the opposite direction and then also with the twirl angle I'm just going to drag those and then drag the second keyframes in front of the first one so it's going in the opposite direction okay so now if we watch it back the clip sort of twirls and then twirls back out so yeah okay on to the second transition so for this one we're going to use a lens distortion and this is kind of like my after effects tutorial of the RGB uh, zoom warp transition I guess so let's search up lens distortion and then drag that onto our clip and then if we adjust the curvature to the negative side it warps in so this is what we're gonna use so let's go to where we want the transition to start press the keyframe button for curvature then go to the end of the clip and then let's just adjust the curvature about negative 61 ish I guess okay so now it kind of zo zooms in really fast and you can adjust the keyframes to make it look a little bit slower if you want. Okay, now let's add it to our second clip. So I'm just going to drag that lens distortion effect onto my second clip again. And then for this one again, I'm just going to drag it to the same number that uh, my other clip was, which was negative 61 for the curvature. And then press the keyframe button, then go a couple of frames forward and just refresh that so that it goes back to zero. And then if we watch it back, it just warps really quickly. And then you can adjust the keyframes to make it look a little bit cleaner. Okay, now on to our third effect. So we're also going to add lens distortion on this one, um, but this will be a different type of lens distortion. So let's add it to our clip, and then we're going to use vertical decentering, and let's press the keyframe button towards the end of the clip, and then go to the very end of the clip, and then just drag it to like about negative 70. And then as you can see, you can see these like white, the white background. So we're going to need to adjust the scale and position and rotation for this. So, um, yeah, I already have some scale keyframes, but don't mind that. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to reset this. And then I'm going to press the keyframe button for scale and then also press the keyframe button for position and rotation and then go to the end of the clip. And then I'm just going to drag the scale and rotation towards the clip, um, but... I'm just going to try to get it away from the white outline and background. So I'm just going to rotate it a little bit. Okay, so now if we watch it back, it sort of curves and like, there's a different type of warping effect, I guess. And then if you could see some of the white uh, background in like the middle of the keyframes, you can just adjust the position to fix that up. Okay, now let's move on to our second part of this clip. 
and we're going to add lens distortion on this clip as well. And then for this one, we don't need to add vertical decentering, but you can if you want. But for this one, I'm just going to do curvature again. So at the beginning of the clip, I'm just going to make it negative 20 and press the keyframe button and then go a couple frames forward and then refresh it to be back at zero. Okay, now we can also move on to the scale and rotation uh, so that it kind of matches the other clip. So I'm going to press the keyframe button for scale and make this about 125, I guess. And then also press the keyframe button for rotation and we can just rotate this the same side that we did for the other one. So I'm just going to go to 20 degrees and let's change the scale to 165. And then we'll go a couple frames forward, reset the two parameters so it goes back to zero. Okay, now if you watch it back, it sort of rotates um, and yeah. <laughs> okay, on to our fourth effect. So I'm going to add turbulent displacement on this clip. And as you can see, it already is looking kind of funny. But if we drag the mount, it sort of like warps into this weird position. So we're going to play with that. So let's go a little bit before the end of the clip and we're going to change the mount to zero and press the keyframe button and then go to the end of the clip and we can make this amount whatever number we like uh, the more the higher the number the more like weirdish warp it's gonna be so I'm just gonna keep it at 75 and then now let's move on to our second clip and I'm just gonna add the turbulent displacement again and because the number was 75 in the beginning I'm gonna keep that number at 75 in the beginning again so let's change the amount to 75 and then press the amount keyframe button and then go a little bit forward and we're going to change that number to zero. Okay, so now if we watch it back, it sort of warps out and warps back into normal. Okay, moving on to our last effect. Let's go to effects and we're going to search up wave warp. And we'll add that to our first clip. And then we'll go down to the settings. And let's just keep it at sign. And we can change the wave height to make it some weird, like, big numbers. But first, let's change the pinning to all edges. Okay, so now it has this like little wave after we adjusted some of the height and width. Okay, so if I change my wave height back to zero, you can see that it goes back to normal. So, so we're going to go a little bit before the clip ends and we're going to press the keyframe button for wave height at zero. And then go to the end of the clip and just change the wave height to like some sort of random big number. I'm just going to change it to like 120. So it sort of warps like this and you can really adjust the numbers to make it whatever you like um, and you can probably get different results. But now I'm going to go up to the scale and I'm going to press the keyframe button for scale and rotation and then go to the end of the clip and just scale it in and also rotate it just a little bit. So now it has this cool little warping effect as it zooms in. Okay, so once again, you can copy and save this as a preset. So I'm just going to go to the wave warp and copy the wave warp and go to the motion and just copy the two and right click and press save preset and then I'm just gonna save this as wave warp transition so now if we go to effects and we search that transition up we can add it to our second clip and then we can adjust the keyframes so that it happens in reverse order so you want to drag the second scale and the second rotation keyframe to the front and then just drag it up in the beginning and then we can do the same with our wave height so you want to drag the second keyframe of the wave height forward to the beginning and then the first keyframe goes after so now it's happening in reverse order, and then if we watch the transition, it sort of warps like this. Okay, what you can also add to make it look a little bit cooler is you can add some RGB split onto this. So I'm just going to show you real quick because I have so many tutorials on this. So I'm just going to nest this these two clips by right-clicking and pressing nest. So it kind of combines the two clips together. And then I'm going to add RGB by searching that in the effects panel and then adding it to my nested clip. And then I'm going to change the blending mode to screen and then hold alt on the nested clip and then just drag it up twice so that I have three copies of this clip. Okay, now I'm going to go to my top uh, nested sequence and I'm going to change the green to zero and the blue to zero. Go to the second clip, change the red to zero and the blue to zero and then go to my last clip and change red to zero and green to zero and blue to 100. Okay, so now it goes back to normal, but if I go to my second layer because I want like a greenish purplish tint to it and I scale it up, you can see that you can sort of see those colors. So we can keyframe this so that it, this appears. So I'm going to go to where the transition is kind of happening and then right before the transition starts, I want to press the keyframe button for scale 
and then go to where the transition ends and then once again press that keyframe button and then I'm going to go to the middle of it and just scale it into like 105 so that that effect sort of appears through and you can do this to all these transitions and yeah make it look like colorful I guess so yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up if you did subscribe for more videos and I'll see you guys in my next video bye guys